For the past 40 decades, the Mid-South has been positively impacted by the Baptist Memorial Healthcare Foundation. For their anniversary, let's celebrate their history and contributions. Let's welcome Robbie Johnson, Chief Development Officer, Robbie, and Jenny Neville's Foundation Consultant. Hi, Miss Jenny. Hello, Good. how are you? Good, welcome to Bluff City Life, you guys. Thank you so much, okay. appreciate you having Great Thank to be you. here. 40 years, and I have to say 40 years of love, providing love for people. Let's kind of walk through what that looks like and kind of how I got started and everything. Let's talk about the timeline. Sure. Um, I guess I'll start. Please okay, Miss Jenny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby went like, this will be you, Miss Jenny. Yes, right ahead. <laughs> well, just to go way back in time, mm -hmm. the Baptist Medical Center Hospital started in 1912. Wow. And then in 1940, they began the process of trying to look at what healthcare was going to look at mm -hmm. like in future years, mm -hmm. knowing that reimbursements were going to shrink. Mm. that it was going to be more and more difficult to fund care. Mm. And so they began looking at ways and mechanisms how they could bring in money to help refurbish equipment and expand technology and do those sorts of things. So they looked at initially some for-profit ventures like grocery stores. You've probably heard about the prized bull mm -hmm. in Mississippi <laughs> that we had a share of. Uh, and various innocent shop fronts, that sort of thing. And this was all under the leadership of Dr. Frank Groner, uh, who was a brilliant businessman. Mm -hmm. And so that went on for several years. They um, used that money to help, as I say, refurbish things at the hospital. But as time progressed, they realized that they really needed a not-for-profit hospital, didn't really need to be um, out in the doing business. Yes. And owning a bull. And, and owning, owning a, a bull. bull. Yes. <laughs> so they took the proceeds from, from those uh, transactions and they created the Baptist Healthcare Foundation, mm -hmm. which was actually chartered in 1983. Mm -hmm. But that was after years of, of you know, doing business. And then they rolled the funds into the foundation, which was our start. Mm -hmm. So, And that's really smart to even have someone that was innovative enough to think, like, how can we keep this care yes. going? Oh, yeah. Yes, you know? absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they were exactly right. You know, health care doesn't look like it used to. Mm -hmm. It does not. In terms of reimbursement. And the fact that there's not enough money just purely from, from reimbursement sources that you have to go into philanthropy to really make mm -hmm. a difference. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we think about that because we look at the hospital as just being a place to get me well. Yes. You know, take care of me. Yes. We Absolutely. don't get the business aspect of Absolutely. it. What do you think about that, Mr. Rapp? Oh, yeah. I mean, because it, it has. I mean, it's changed so much. And people, you know, it's not like going to the grocery store and you pay $2 for a mm -hmm. gallon of milk and you buy it. But it changes so much because the prices are determined by insurance right. and, and coverage and that sort of thing. And so through philanthropy and people's investment in our health care system at the, through the foundation, we're able to provide mm -hmm. technologies mm -hmm. for the future. We're also able to help patients. You know, mm -hmm. Many of our patients have tremendous needs. And so through our patient assistance funds, mm -hmm. whether it's our cancer patient assistance funds or patient assistance funds at our hospital, those philanthropic investments help us as a foundation provide for the needs of others. And so it's almost that paying it forward concept. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the foundation assisting, so let me kind of just understand that and maybe some people who don't understand mm -hmm. it. So if a patient, say, has a different whatever service done and the insurance doesn't cover all of it or they need some assistance, is that sort of where the foundation kind of steps in or is it still that patient's responsibility? Like, how do you guys lend assistance toward the, from the right. patient's mm -hmm. perspective? Yeah. Well, um, there is a charity mm -hmm. care that we are, are obligated to provide as a as a not for profit ho hospital and healthcare system. Mm -hmm. So that takes care of those major, major unpaid mm -hmm. bills mm -hmm. and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. They there's a process, they apply and then people are accepted as charity patients. Mm -hmm. But the things that we provide are the things that couldn't exist otherwise, um, in terms of you know, some particular technology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something along those lines maybe um, a drug protocol mm -hmm. for our cancer patients, mm -hmm. a clinical trial. Clinical, yes. Those mm -hmm. are the sorts of things that have to be supported through fundraising dollars, otherwise they would not exist. Example, clinical trial for a cancer patient, they have to come in for periodic screenings, blood tests, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the proper insurance, you can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So that's where we step mm -hmm. in and we help provide support in that arena as well. And you also provide, because I, I had another young lady on and mm -hmm. talked about the cottage house. The, yes. The yes. Yeah, like, yes. And I didn't even think about that, but mm -hmm. that now lends toward a mind, body, spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, the yes. whole encompasses the whole person. Because mm -hmm. we you know we don't think about grief during this cottage that was a yeah. You don't think about grief affecting so many things in your life. You know, yes. grief has a way of making you sick when you're not even mm -hmm. sick. It, it does indeed. You know? mm -hmm. And it originated actually out of our hospice program. Okay. And we realized very quickly that there was nothing in the city or in the country really for 
uh, children, particularly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. also for adults, and that sort of was the spot where it was Camp Good Grief was born, yes. and the center was created, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I do love the fact, not to cut yeah. you off, I do love the fact too that when that actually happens in real time, you guys yes. truly reach out. Yes, because mm -hmm. I've witnessed that for myself, and, and that just warms my heart. Because oftentimes we talk about different things, but to see it live and in color, yes. mm -hmm. it, it feels different oh, yeah. when you actually need it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because because a lot of times, you know, until there's a loss, people don't realize they need a resource like that. Amen. I mean, yeah. but but once you experience that loss, you understand that, you know, I, I have a great group, you know, my church group, mm -hmm. my friends. Support. But but a lot of times those people don't really know how to talk to you. You know, they, they don't, don't want to bring up that loved one mm -hmm. because they're afraid that would hurt. But reality is, I want to talk about that loved one because it, it lets me know you remember that person. Mm -hmm. And that's important to me. And so through I the Grief that. Center, sure. we're yeah. able to help people process and walk through that grief journey and know that they're not alone. There are other people that experience the same thing as them. Mm -hmm. Are there any special plans? What, we're going to talk about the event sure. in the next segment because you stay with us for that. But I mean, is, how do you guys like plan out when, what, what the, the goal is? Like, do you have like different landmarks that you want to hit for mm -hmm. certain things over time? Mm -hmm. I would say that we absolutely do. We set goals every year. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it has to do with cultivating relationships and solicitations and that sort of thing. Uh, and we raise anywhere from six million to fourteen or fifteen million every year, depending upon you know what's going on mm -hmm. in the course of a year. But our signature programs, like the Centers for Good Grief, mm -hmm. and also our Baptist Operation Outreach, mm -hmm. which is our van. Uh, health care for the homeless, our van, nice. um, and also our Baptist University. Those are things and really key programs for the center. They have no revenue, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that's purely fundraising. So we have to raise for operations every year. Same with Operation Outreach. We do partner with Christ Community Health mm -hmm. Services mm -hmm. for that, but we still provide. We've provided a new van. We've provided just basic, you know, staffing, you know, funds for that sort of thing. Foundations provided grants for those yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. Whew, that's a lot of goodies, and it's a major fundraiser, too. <laughs> yes, it is. Lesson. Whoa, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're talking about Mind, Body, and Spirit Baptist Hospital. Stay with us. We'll be right back to talk about their special 40th anniversary party. Be right back. <laughs> 